Um, some of you might be wondering, what is the relationship between Formula One motor racing and business or management? I have, um, over the years, um, been able to be a privileged actor of Formula One motor racing. I am not only an avid and passionate uh, follower of Formula One racing, um, but as a CEO of a company, I have over the years seen a correlation between a number of things that happen in Formula One motor racing and my everyday business. So my short talk uh, today will introduce you first of all, I hope, to the world of Formula One motor racing, but more importantly, show some of the similarities that every bus everyday business has uh, in Formula One racing. As you're aware, Formula One motor racing operates in a highly competitive, high octane and high performance driven environment. A bit like your business. Um, Formula One racing, apart from the thrill of the speed and the superhuman efforts of the drivers, actually has a lot of similarities with everyday business. So I'll be looking at what I think are five key management lessons that one can gather from Formula One racing. And you will see the similarities between each of them and what you can do in your everyday business and what I have done or witnessed in my everyday business. But before we go in the um, management lessons, I would like to show you a short video of about 30 seconds. And you will understand why I'm telling you it's 30 seconds after you've seen it. So let's watch the video. So, in case you missed what happened just right now, there were about 20 mechanics around the car. Four wheels were changed. The whole car was rebalanced so that it can join the race again. And a number of adjustments were made on the car itself, which obviously you missed. So this is to me management lesson one. Winning by teamwork. In this particular example, you could see how an agile team having very clear responsibilities for each other, can focus and deliver the total goal, which is the team gaining a lot of seconds. In this particular instance, when the car goes into the garage and goes out again, the whole point is to give the car a new lease of life. The wheels are changed. Very important instructions are given to the driver. And very interestingly, the difference in Formula One racing between somebody who wins and somebody who comes second, as you know, is a couple of seconds and sometimes hundreds of a second. Ayrton Senna, one of the top uh, racing drivers in the world, Brazilian triple world champion, said this, and I sometimes say this to my team at work, when you come second in Formula One racing, you're the first to lose. Management lesson number two, innovation, change is a constant. I think in business, like in Formula One racing, there is no such thing as something stopping and it, it doesn't change ever again. You have to always reinvent yourself. And they do that very well in Formula One. This is the evolution of the cars. And do remember that Formula One is an engineering-centric business. So on your top um, left-hand side corner is the first car which raced on the 13th of May, 1950. All along, and a lot of it has to do for security reasons, the cars in Formula One racing have evolved. And as you can see, they have evolved drastically. On the top, uh, at the bottom uh, right-hand side, are the cars that are currently in the races. These cars go up to 250 kilometers an hour on the streets of Singapore. So if you have visited Singapore, 
the streets of Singapore are actually quite narrow. And interestingly, on normal circuits, like the proper racing circuits, these very same cars go to 300 kilometers an hour. So when you're on the Paul Riverda road and you're at uh, 110 kilometers an hour and you think you're going very fast, you're actually not going fast at all. The other thing about this is that innovation, like in business, innovation must be a daily practice. You have to every day put yourself in right in question again. Actually speaking, I've been very lucky to speak to one team principal of, a, of one of the top five teams. And what he has mentioned to me is that even if they know they are a team that will win, even if they know they are in the top three, after every single race, they put everything in question again. They do not accept that, you know, good is always good. Things changing keeps changing, just like in business, where your environment keeps changing, your competitor keeps changing, your products keeps changing. The other thing about innovation in Formula One is the advent of what they, it's a derivative of Formula One racing, it's Formula E. Formula E, if you want, is the electric version of Formula One. And the reason that it has evolved is because more and more cars and more and more of car makers are actually participating in Formula E. Formula E is becoming very, very big. It's coming as big as, big as Formula One racing. Um, the reason I'm telling you this is because innovation also in, is big in Formula E. Your hybrid cars that are coming on the roads today are a direct, come directly from development of these cars, and these cars race less fast, but they race on roads, and in this particular instance, it's the race in Mexico City. This is my favorite management lesson. I keep telling this to people every day. You have to focus, focus, and focus on the essential. Do not get distracted. Do not worry about what is happening around you. Just focus on the task that you have to do. Formula One drivers, and once you meet them, apart from you, because you like the passion of Formula One, are very imp impressive human beings. Some pilots have their adrenaline go so high at the start of a race that their heartbeat shoots up from 86 uh, beats per minute to 176. But what is important about focus, focus, focus in Formula One drive, uh, with Formula One drivers is the fact that there's a lot of things happening around them. There's a lot of distraction happening around them. It's like you're sitting at your office, the phone is ringing, reports are coming in, the CEO is phoning you up, but they have this incredible ability of focusing really on the bare essentials. And sometimes if you watch the race on TV, just before uh, the start of the race or before the cars go out on the grid, you will find them with their eyes completely shut, immersed totally in their cars. They are not receiving any instruction from anyone. Actually, what they're doing, very interestingly, is they are reliving the whole circuit in their mind. So in their mind, they are already driving the car, and they see each bend, corner, straight lines, etc. And the way they do this is by completely focusing on the essential. So if you think your steering wheel is scary, this is a driving a steering wheel of a Formula One car. In this particular instance, it's from the Team Sauber. So you can now understand why I tell you that the ability to focus is quite incredible. For the very simple reason that their core task or their core value, if you talk of business, is just to drive and win. But in this particular instance, they're getting data from the engineers, they're getting instructions from the team principals, and they also have to drive and try to beat others at 300 kilometers an hour. Another aspect of which has always impressed me is the engineers at the back um, in the garage during the Formula One race. I've been lucky enough, very lucky, I should say privileged, very lucky 
since 2010, I've been going to a number of Formula uh, One races, invited by one of the top five teams. And when you immerse in this environment where the engineers, basically what they're doing is they're analyzing data, which is called telemetry. So all these informations are connected online to the team's garage, and most of the time it's in the UK. You know, it's in Silverstone, it's in Oxfordshire. So here what is happening is that important data is being gathered, it's being analyzed, and it's being sent to the driver. So the driver, as I told you, is not only driving, focusing with his steering wheels with a thousand buttons, but he's also getting these instructions so that he can drive and beat the competition. Management lesson four, very simple. And that leads on to what I was saying to you. Accurate, clear, and timely communication. This is the pit wall in Formula One. Basically here, you have all the top guys of the team sitting. The team principal, the race engineer, the race strategist, the driver's personal engineer, and the car designer. Second on the, from the left hand side, the ball guy you see is Adrian Newey. Adrian Newey is the designer of the Red Bull Racing car team. He's currently is now designing boats in America's Cup. So these guys are getting information from the garage, analyzing it, looking at what the competition is doing, and also passing the instruction over to the driver. So accurate, timely, and clear information, just like in business. There's no need of sending long reports, big reports, thousands and thousands of pages. Just keep to the essential. My last management lesson, which is lesson management five, is about HR, having leaders at every single level of the organization. Interestingly, in Formula One racing, you see this, they do have levels of people, highly competent people at every single level, whether it be engineers, whether it be the owner of the team itself, and there are people who take very, very rapid decisions. No thick layer, no organization chart, which is 10 pages long. They are there, their sole objective is to win the race. And the way they do this is by aligning the team's objective with their own objective and with uh, the uh, other people of the team. Today. So there is a complete alignment of objectives from the bigger picture to the smaller picture. I think F1 teams like business organizations in order to survive, you know, this is no secret, but what I'm trying to show to you is that my passion for Formula One and my actual work have overlapped to a certain extent. I think business organizations need to be lean, both lean and agile. What I mean by lean is that, as I mentioned to you, no strict organizational structure, no big job title, and also very agile. They have to be able to adapt and change very rapidly in a changing world. They've got to be creative. I've told you, change is a constant. The day you understand that nothing is fixed in life, nothing is fixed at work, nothing is fixed in your business, you'll understand that the biggest favor you can get in your life is to move out of your comfort zone. Effective at recruiting the best talent. Every year, or every two or three years, once their contracts are over, you'll see drivers, the very best drivers in the world, move from team to team. And uh, the various teams are completely after getting the very best drivers. And you have also got to be able to restructure and redeploy people very rapidly across the organization. And in Formula One team, they do it very, very well. I think the um, sustained performance levels that you see uh, in Formula One and in business is around three principles, financial, technological, and the human potential. Financial Formula One teams like Businesses have got budgets, they have got cost to control, and also they, once they win, they get prize money, which they redistribute or put in research and development, just like an ordinary business. They are at the forefront of technology. If you visit an F1 team, if you have the chance of visiting an F1 team's garage, 
you will understand that whatever you see on social media about technology moving fast is actually not. It's moving less fast than what you think. Because they are at the forefront of technology, whether it's the technology applied in the car, whether it's the technology applied to the engineers in designing chassis and new cars for the new uh, races, they are at the forefront of technology. And I think businesses in our current world need to really focus on the ability to move with technology. And obviously human potential. F1 teams, F1 racing like business is about the people that you have. So getting the very best people will get you the very best result. Finally, I want to share with you what I think are two very important um, proposition which applies to business as it applies to Formula One racing. F1 team believes that the real gains always come at the boundaries. This is the going the extra mile story. They are never happy with whatever they get after a day's race. I've seen from far debriefing going on immediately after races where they question every single thing. So again, I think the real gains will always come out at the boundary. And in terms of total quality management, it is about operating at the very edges of excellence, just like a company. You know, you have to move on and you have to keep changing things to make it get better and better. Certainly in an environment when your competitor is going to change his or her product and to challenge you. So I hope that um, what I've shared with you is not only a passion, and I invite you to watch the next race, which is the American race, um, I think it's next week, if you are willing to wake up on a Sunday at 11 p.m., which I do. I hope I've shared with you my passion for Formula One racing. And obviously, you know, I, I, I take my family with me when we go, and it's become very bad now because we each have a team that we support at home. So you can imagine the races when they're going on, we each have a different driver that we support. But what I wanted to show you was that over the years, the passion for a sport gradually moved to things that I was seeing in my everyday life and in my own business. Um, and when I hope that when you watch Formula One racing the next time around, and I'm sure among you, and that includes teachers, headmasters, you have your own business, you will see the five management lessons that I've tried to explain to you today. Thank you very much.